joy from learning that your health continues good. Little did she know what was ahead. The Lord be praised. I love the details now. The mattress and the bag and the pillow you sent, I received from Pedro Sanchez, and he told me that you have kept up your good spirits. This corresponds exactly to the procedure in the Inquisition. You had to bring your own bedding, but when you arrived at the Inquisition prison, the bedding was sent home, because you couldn't leave your dependents without clothing. So the detail in the record matches exactly the procedure we know about from other sources. I wrote to him, that's to Pedro Sanchez, to do everything he could for you. As for the cocoa, which I wanted to send you, I spoke to the priest, obviously the local parish priest, but he has paid so little attention to it that he has given me no answer, and I'm thinking now of speaking to your comrade and friend, Luis Alvarez, instead. So Martin had a lot of Spanish friends. She goes on. The Lord only knows how disconsolate I was at being able to send you a message before the ship sailed, owing to it having set sail so suddenly. If I have a chance to send you a pillow or coverings, I will send them, even if I leave myself without a rag. And I will do it for you through your comrade, not through your brother-in-law, my own lousy Juan Martinez, which he doesn't like or trust at all. Now listen to this. Your daughter, a babe in arms, whom he's never seen, your daughter sends you a warm embrace and is very well. My father and mother are well and continually pray God to restore you safe and sound to your home. And another nice little detail, Isabel Martinez, your daughter, so we know her name. Isabel Martinez is her name. She sends you a loving kiss. May Jesus Christ never see you again, which is what I, a miserable sinner, never cease to implore the Mother of God, asking her intercession. I am in good health. Thanks be to the Lord for so great a favour. I pray to the only God to restore you, not only on my account, but on account of your daughter. I am very distressed not to have heard from you since your arrival in Mexico City. I beg you, on your life, not to fail to send me a message by somebody. To hear from you will be a great consolation and give me more strength to nurse our daughter. Signor Diego Gallian has been transferred from here and a gentleman named, I think, Pablo Cota will take his place. And they say he is going to Nicaragua as governor, which has grieved me because he was so good to me up until now. I have asked Antonio Manuel to give me only the white dress to go to Mass in. This is what he sent back from Mexico when he arrived there. But he refused and has shown me great cruelty in all matters. In the end, your comrade, in disgust, arranged a bond for it and sent me the key and told me to take it out myself, which I did. And she ends, I pray to God daily with tears in my eyes to keep you in good health. From this town, on the feast of the Immaculate Conception, your disconsolate wife and companion, Juana de Valenuevo. That's the letter she writes to him in 1574. We know she wrote it, and we know it arrived in Mexico, but we don't know if he ever read it. Okay. And the reason we're doubtful is that the poor man went mad. He perjured himself, and he went to the eternal reward in an extremely violent and sad way. Okay, so, now, not to completely depress you, I will end with what you might do with these records, or what I hope to do or try to do with them. Okay? It would be great to see if the Irish are special or not. Of course, they are. <laughs> But it would be nice to see were they treated differently or the same to the Spanish or to the English, to the Dutch, to the French, to the Portuguese, to the Genoese, to all the others who were brought before the Inquisition as foreigners. Secondly, it would be nice to know more about the use of the Inquisition by Spanish interest groups and state to prevent and to control access and integration of migrants. 
it'd be nice to know of the exploitation of the Inquisition by migrant groups to assist them in their own integration and in their own acceptance of Spain. The Irish were very good at that. You'd like to see how it was done systematically and how other groups did. You'd like to know more about the dissimulation, <coughs> the manipulation of denunciation mechanisms, about the moral police, and you'd love to know more about denunciation and censorship cultures. And I was talking about this to a colleague at Manus before I came out. He studies East Germany. And having looked at this, he was astounded at the parallels between police states in the modern era and the social control networks which existed in early modern Spain. And it's extraordinary the power of denunciation, the power of suspicion, and the huge controlling power of fear as an organ of social control and manipulation. I finish with a citation from a scholar who knows more about this than I do, and a beautiful thought. The Inquisition, says Helen Rawlings, is increasingly being placed in the context of developments occurring within wider society and seen as a vehicle for the projection of personal and creative tensions and aggressions via malicious denunciation. In this sense, interest groups controlled the institution via strategies of dissimulation in their delivery of false testimonies rather than being controlled by it via a successful program of submission and conversion. The best way to avoid being caught is to accuse somebody else. If you are accused, accuse your neighbour and your accuser more vehemently than they have accused you. It's a vicious circle, a dangerous spiral, and hugely effective in social control. I finish, honestly, with a picture. It's Goya, one of my favorite artists, who did extraordinary paintings of the kings of Spain at the end of the 18th and the early 19th century. He lampoons them and sends them off, and they don't seem to notice. I don't know how he got away with it. They're extraordinary. But he also did a painting of the Inquisition. And if you look at this carefully, it is a picture about subjection. It's a picture of people being cowed. It's a picture, very, very sadly, of the implication of the masses and of the people in the process of their own oppression. Why is it that the oppressed do not always find oppression oppressive? Thank you so much for your